Okay, as it happens, the uh, video on the lathe duplicator didn't generate a whole lot of questions. And uh, since we still have one more process to do, which is to turn the base of this candlestick, I guess there's more to it than that. <laughs> um, I'm going to go ahead and move on to the next phase, which I, is I have to prep some wood for the base of this, and we'll do a faceplate turning in the next video. Um, but one question that did come up that kind of surprised me was, about changing blades on the Shopsmith bandsaw. I thought I'd covered that somewhere. I know that I have, but for the life of me, I can't find that. So this video is going to be uh, just basically that because I need to cut some stock for this base and I don't need the blade that's on here for more than just a few moments. What I need to do right now is to cut a corner out of this piece and from this, this is a big old chunk of cherry. Out of this, I will then cut a circle before going back over to the Shopsmith lathe. Um, currently, I have a 5 8 inch or so, maybe it's a half inch, resawing blade. And I will use that right now to make this cut. And then we're going to swap it out for a quarter inch blade to cut the circle. So um, we'll answer the questions about blade change in just a moment. this we use the Shopsmith toolbox. My version of this bandsaw has knobs that I remove. There are some modern versions that require the use of the hex wrench to get the cover off. We reduce the tension over here. And you'll see this gauge in a few minutes. We'll talk about how we get tension on the blade. But notice the wheel is now lowering. I need to pop the insert out, pushing up from underneath the table here. This table has an extension on it, and that ex these rods may be long enough to interfere with that slot. This one, this one, no. Sometimes they are. This little part right here, if you've got the aluminum table, this holds the table flat. It's basically a quarter 20 carriage bolt with a knob on it. Uh, you may have a version that's cast iron. It has a little hook that you loosen a set screw or a cap screw and that hook will rotate out of the way. I'm gonna bring this down low enough that I can get the blade around this guard. So here, I'm pulling it off of the wheels, I'm pulling it out of the blade guides, and then I'm turning it 90 degrees to get it around that guard. Now back 90 degrees to get it out of the table slot. If you want to, you can fold your blade up, but really that's unnecessary if you have room to store it completely unwound. The blade I'm installing now is a very inexpensive Olsen blade. Uh, it's been a while since I've used an Olsen blade, and somebody suggested I should try it just in case they've made changes to it. I doubt it. So we're going in the slot, going to come around that guard, and then I'm going to, whoop, I don't want to be up and over that, I'm going to come around the upper wheel. Now I'm going to pull it through the guides. And before I put tension on it, I can see right now, because I was using this on a big blade, the guides are pretty far forward. I need to back them off. There's a knob on the back here that if I turn it, it'll pull those guides back. Now, these are ball bearing guides. Yours may not have ball bearing. You may have steel or cool blocks. Same thing on the bottom. I reach back from the bottom, same location on the back and turn the knob. I'm pushing on the front just to make this a little easier for me. Now, put a little bit of pressure against the bearings that are behind the blade, and I want to make sure that it's against the bearings before I tighten down 
or at least stop adjusting this. I, I don't want to push into the blade and have the set of the teeth interacting with my bearings or my guide blocks. At that point, we're in a good position. All right, at this point, I want to make sure I don't have the blade wrapped around, tangled around things. I don't want it tangled around. So I'm going to start adding some tension here. Basically, you can see it's raising the upper wheel. There we go. Now we're at a point where it's starting to pull the blade tight. I want to make sure that I'm not hooked over here or there's the head of a bolt back here. I don't want to catch everything appears to be in a good position. I'm going to continue to tighten up until this little red band or red line on the edge of this flat leaf spring disappears right behind the quarter inch mark. So it is right there. That should be the proper tension. I'm going to give this a spin on the Shopsmith bandsaw. The blade runs towards the back and against the auto track bearings here. Should be against the bottom bearing and it should be ever so slightly ahead of the upper bearing. And that is the proper position for this blade. So looking down from above, you can see my blade is running to the back of the wheel on a Shopsmith bandsaw. Pretty much the only bandsaw that works like this. Everybody else's bandsaw, the, the blade runs to the center or should be positioned in the center of the wheel. Not so with the Shopsmith bandsaw. That, we can snap the table insert in. And we'll reinstall the cover. Yes, I'm running two different styles of replacement tires on this and another bandsaw, just to test them out. So far, I really like the blue ones. The orange ones seem to be embedding with a lot more gunk, but still, they're both okay. Cover goes back on, and we're ready to go. So to get this ready to cut a circle, uh, I found the center. I'm going to need that a little bit later when I mount my, my faceplate to it. You'll, you'll also notice that there's a pretty good solid line here, but there are two lines that diverge from one another. Uh, that's because this isn't an exact square. You saw me cut it. Um, but what I did was I just went from corner to corner to corner, and the center of all those lines will be the center of this piece. But now we're ready to cut this out. I, I don't have a compass here for some reason. I, at least I can't find it. So I just drew it, drew it round with something round that I had, roughly the right size. And let's cut this roughly round. cut a lot like that Bosch blade, which I did not like. Uh, give me Timberwolf blades any day. All right, I hope that that makes sense. Uh, it's pretty straightforward. Again, check out your manual. It'll guide you through along with the video, and you can figure this out. In the next video, we'll get this mounted onto the faceplate, get it onto the lathe duplicator, and we'll finish up that candlestick. In the meantime, make it a great day.